Good morning. I'm Yanni the Greek coming to you live straight from Las Vegas. It's Tuesday, July 30th. Got some Major League Baseball action to share. Also, just got an Olympic bet and it's on golf. Not going to release as a premium play because some of these golf bets just aren't as readily available. Now, if it was one of those that are more readily available, I would release as a premium play like I did with the women's um, basketball play that we got. I think it's a 4% play um, that I think cash or is right about the cash. Um, but this is one of those that the line would move too quickly. And I think a lot of my subscribers, their books probably wouldn't carry it either. Um, but here we go. It's the golf. It's in golf, the Olympics golf matchup. We're taking Rory McIlroy, Rory McIlroy, plus 120 or better. I'd take it all the way down to plus 110 against Xander Schauffel. So we're taking the Rory McIlroy side as a dog. Uh, again, didn't release as a premium play, but these Olympic uh, sides totals have been doing well. But I'm only able to release as premiums those, again, that I'm confident my subscribers that have multiple outs should have no problem being able to grab. Now, we hit our best bet yesterday to 4% play. We don't bet 4% because we don't want a 90% risk of ruin, uh, but we bet 0.25. But that's a 1% of bankroll. We ended up splitting overall, but the bigger bet did come in. Either scratched off a little bit uh, yesterday, probably came out a little bit ahead. I will take it as we continue to grind towards positive in 2024 that's the goal between now and december 31st so we could have that same party like we did last year now i already released a four percent play in mma uh for the ufc card on saturday I actually have a five percent possible uh don't want to like tease it um but remember last week i said it was going to be pimblet um but he had flipped the favorite and started moving higher. And that's the opposite of what you should do. If you're truly doing this for real and not doing it to sell picks, if the line's getting worse, I'm not going to increase my bet. I'm going to do the opposite. You're either going to decrease it or, you know, not put any more in like we did. Obviously we got down at a better number. Now the line moved in our favor, got higher. Yes. I love the side, but I'm not going to, make a bigger bet now that the number's worse. If anything, if it came back the other way, we would look to now take a bigger position. Again, even though I'm in the pick selling business, I just, it's a reflection of what I do every single day, day by day. That's why there's not like all kind of packages and pushing like, oh, I got a big play today. I got a game of the week today. I got um, five and oh on this three days and blah, blah, blah. I got this trend that's 92 and seven over the last, Come on, stop the nonsense. Just tell me what you're doing over the last 3,000 picks so I know if there's statistical significance and if you got an edge. Come on, let's stop the nonsense. Now, with that said, I don't even know where I'm at. I got so much stuff going on. I've already been diving into the NFL and college football. I'm so excited for this year. I've already committed to a handful of, of content. Um, so there will be some shows that I'll be doing out there. A lot of stuff going on with the UFC as well. So uh, busy times coming up, busy times as we approach August and September and the next few months. So let's get to some of this baseball action, see if I could pull out a winner for you guys today. Now, yesterday I shared uh, one of the plays that uh, another trader gave me that I did not get down on. I believe that one, they did so again today. They gave me the over in the Dodgers San Diego. I believe they gave, went over nine Dodgers San Diego. I passed on that. I just couldn't get there with the stuff that I look at to confirm. Um, but if you, any of you had a lean on that, follow, fade, or ignore. Just like to pass along uh, what I deem sharp information. And this comes from one of the movers that I trade um, cards with each and every day. Now, one of the premium plays that I did get down on and release to subscribers as a 3%, but I hit first five and I hit the side. Uh, Would have been a 4% play had... I've been able to get nine for subscribers, but there were some rogue nines out there. I was able to use them, um, but I gave it out at eight and a half, and that's the Minnesota New York Mets under. So we went Minnesota New York Mets under eight and a half, and uh, also went under four and a half first five. 
Now, the initial buy came at under nine and under five. I got a little bit down, but there weren't uh, a bunch across the screen. So some had already had eight and a half, um, which is why for subscribers, I immediately just released eight and a half and hoping if they got nine, boom, they got a better number. If they got five, boom, they got a better number. But I let them know we were willing to take the uh, eight and a half and the four and a half where I will grade it. Now, obviously, we have some recency by 17 runs were scored in yesterday's games with the Mets blowing them out. And if you look at the Mets, I believe what four of their last five games coming into this series, I mean, uh, Minnesota, four of their last five coming into the series have gone over as well as three of the last four. And uh, I think four of the last six for the New York Mets. So we're, we have a little over bias coming into this series for sure. You look at the season for both these teams. Um, I believe the over, yep, correct, has cashed more than the under. 11 games over 500 for the Mets. Five games over 500 for Minnesota. As we know, I've said it before, I'll say it again. If you look at the NFL, you look at Major League Baseball, you look at most major sports, you zoom out, look at 5,000 bets, you'll usually get close to 2,500 favorites, 2,500 dogs, 2,500 overs, 2,500 unders. That's how efficient the sports betting market is. That's why we trust it to regress and progress towards the mean as far as the law of big numbers go. It's simply math. It's not my opinion. It's math. And it's stuff that I've seen actually play out in real time because I bet long enough for that to happen. Um, so we like that. The recency there. Um, I wish the starting pitching on the Mets side was a little worse, if that makes sense, even though we won an under game here. I Meaning Manaic's coming off a decent game for him, where he allowed only two earned runs. And this is a guy that's averaging over his last five, 3.4 earned runs, um, and only averaging about five innings, 5.1, 5.2 innings. Um, it took him over 100 pitches to only go four innings in that last start. So I think that is the trade-off. Um, but had he gotten like a lit up, <laughs> I think we'd have been probably, maybe even looking to uh, make a little bigger bet at this eight and a half um, because we do like to take advantage of recency biases. We like to take advantage of that a lot in sports. And with baseball, you have every single day um, So there, and so many teams. So there's a lot of opportunities. And again, we're going to go under eight and a half and under four and a half first five for the New York Mets and the Minnesota Twins as today's best bet. And uh, let's get to some questions real quick. Let's go. Let's start this up. Uh Where we start. All right. This Justin, Justin, Justin. Maybe not a question for the video. You could ask in the steam room. That's okay. Ask it here, my man. And, and thank you for well, the steam room. Um, deciding what day we're going to do it this week. I know there's UFC on Saturday. Going to see what time that starts. Uh, may do a weekend one. May do a day early or, or during the week going to mix it in because I want everyone to get an opportunity. I know people work different days, different hours. So that's why I switch it up to make sure everyone has a chance to answer, ask questions live. Now you're saying we talk a lot about investments and the future. Yes, sir. Uh, things are really going to get bad. I don't want to get into it right now. Um, but I did a, a deep dive into a lot of economic uh, indicators last night and we're already there. Like the recession's here, whether we want to admit it or not. And it's a question of it's going to go depression um, or well, is that going to happen at the end of the decade? It's just that the debt's just way too high. The interest payment interest is just, based on what the rates are. The interest payment is just way, way, way too much. Um, they're running out of room of being able to kick the can down the road. They're going to turn these printing presses on again. Oh, forget about it. Forget about it hyperinflation around the corner. Be careful. Save your money and more importantly, put it into assets. Put it into assets because when shit hits the fan, that's what happens. The the wealth gap increases. The wealth gap gets better, greater and greater and greater because what happens is assets really appreciate, 
really appreciate. So who has assets? The 1%. Start living your life like the 1%, even if you're not there. Like I've been explaining so many times, you have the money. Even if you don't think so, you have the money. You pay a cell phone bill. You pay an internet bill. You pay so many bills every month. You're responsible. You can charge yourself $25. You can charge yourself $50. I know you're thinking, Ace, what's $25 going to do for me? What's $50 going to do for me? What's what's $100 going to do for me? Five, six years from now, you never know. And all you have to do is start putting that away. If you're waiting for the big score, you may be waiting forever. So start with small and work your way there. Even if you have $100 in gold by the end of this month, it's $100 more than you had last month. If you never bought it before. And if you do it again next month, it's still another hundred dollars. Now you have two hundred dollars in gold that you didn't have two months ago. So yeah, your life starts to change incrementally and then exponentially. That's what happens once you accumulate. So I, I know I'm going everywhere, my man Justin. Let me get back to your question. So he's saying he's built his bankroll to a good level. Sports and blackjack. Love you. You're right down my alley. When you're in Vegas, hit me up. We should hang out. He said I, he has a decent amount of crypto. That's what I like. You know, my cold storage. Um, and he's thinking about in physical precious metals. Physical. Yes. Add gold, silver. More gold than silver. Kind of like more Bitcoin than Ethereum. Because silver is manipulated too much. That's the problem with silver. It's very manipulated. We are going to have a, 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 a silver squeeze probably over the next three, five years because it's being used so much more now uh, in industrial use, not just as a store of value. And because of that, with the EVs, with the solar panels, uh, scarce, silver is going to get more scarce and more scarce as a resource. Um, and that's why I'm looking at some of those silver mining companies that are just so undervalued. Some of those gold mining and silver mining cap, uh, companies are just so destroyed. If you look at their charts, they're so, so undervalued. So if you have patience, um, there's some big scores to be made in some of those. Um, but getting back to your question, he said, without giving financial advice, this is not financial advice. I am not a financial advisor or an expert by any means, um, but I do have an opinion. He said, I'm trying, I want to acquire some gold and silver or start buying. He said, I, okay, what do you think I should wait to acquire some gold or silver or start buying now? I'm not trying to time the market per se, but both assets are quite high right now. And if the market does correct later this year, could be a good time to buy then. A lot of times wealth value is created when you buy, not when you sell. If you bought BTC in 2021, you've made a little in comparison to buying near lows. Well, well, well said. Um, Here's what I is great question. And here's my, my honest opinion. I think you should wait. I think you should wait. And here's why. When I look at the gold chart, G O L D, not G L D, not paper gold, real physical gold. And you go to a weekly chart. you're starting to see just like Apple, there was a topping tail two weeks back, two weeks back with solid volume. Now, right now it's going back up. If it retraces on the weekly back to about 2440, I'm going to short gold actually, because I do think, I know some, some really smart people think it has one more run in it has another up leg up to the 3000 range. I thought this 2,500 range was the high. Cause if you, anyone that's been with me, you remember, I started talking about it at 1500, 1600 at 2000. I was really pushing it, expecting we're getting the 2,500 minimum. Um, so I actually have, I'll tell you what my note says. Where are my glasses? I have a note on my chart. This is too funny. All right, here's my note. Topping tail retrace 225, 225.85. So if you look at the GLD chart, GLD, paper gold, paper gold. Paper gold reflects physical gold chart. Just like I said, two weeks back, we had a topping tail on physical gold. There's a topping tail on paper gold. The topping tail on paper gold is at 
right now we're at 222.58 as I look at the, the screen. I want this to go up to that retrace, to that 225 mark. If it does, I am going to short, um, swing short gold, expect to drop. It's just starting to hit the fan. We're looking at the most evictions in a, coming up at the end of this month because people are now two and three months behind in their rent payment. That's nothing to celebrate. It's actually a sad, sad time. Credit card debt is now over a trillion dollars. And more importantly, the interest rates at the highest it's been in what? In what? Since what? 20 years. So not only are people have the most amount of debt on credit cards, but the interest they're paying is the highest ever as well. That's not going to end well. That will not end well. The most repossessions of automobiles has happened over the first six months of 2024 than ever before. So cars that were bought prior to 2024 leading into that last six months of 2023 are being repossessed now. Like people don't realize the layoffs that have occurred from the big corporations. Like Justin, things are going to get bad. You're absolutely right. So if you have cash, stack it. I know we're losing buying power by holding on to dollars, but you need them to invest, to buy. Wait for the dump, they, Justin, it's coming. This is nothing I'm celebrating, but it's something I'm preparing. And we're already seeing not just the cracks, but so soon those cracks are going to get huge, huge. You're going to start seeing the bank failures. You're going to see the unemployment rise. You're going to see the uh, unemployment people filing for benefits rise. Like all that is coming. All that is coming. Um, yeah, not good times. Not good times. So I highly, highly recommend um, stack that cash so you could buy. Anyone that has assets, sit on those assets. Sit on those assets, ride it out. That's what's going to increase in value. That's definitely what's going to increase in value. Tough times, man. Tough times. All right. All right. Who's up? Who's up? All right. History minute. So I'm hearing that clients need to have capital to bet on multiple sports in addition to NFL and NCAA to achieve results similar to yours. I'm not sure what that means. Um. I know last year, college football and NFL combined, I finished number one in profit. We also finished number one in Major League Baseball. So, yeah, that's why I get let 2023 was a great year. Um, you know, like turn profit eight of the last nine years, different markets. I do bet multiple markets. Um, but yeah, NFL and college football are the two, two markets that we look forward to every single year. And uh, hopefully I could repeat what I've done last year and uh, another number one in profit. We combine the both, especially college football. Forget about it. The info we get in college football, can't beat it. Cannot beat it. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's about it. The rest, there's just too many. I would have to throw a dart and uh, don't want to hold anyone back. If I missed your question, ask again. You can always connect, have a long conversation. And uh, also, subscribers, make sure enter that Steam room. That's where uh, the, the most gold is truly shared. And you have access to talk to me one-on-one -on -one as long as you want. Fire back and forth. Have that conversation. Don't forget, smash that like button and uh, try to share this and comment questions so we can keep this going as long as possible. You guys have a great day. Enjoy the games. Do some damage.